Well, hello, everyone. This is the iBug Buzz for Monday, March 21st, 2022. I did not change my thing. It, it almost said February, but no, it is March 2022. This is episode 525. My name is Stephen, and I'm going to be your facilitator along with Sandia tonight. You know, each week, we I, I certainly look forward to this, and I imagine a lot of you do too, because we get to talk about all things iOS, that being the iPhone, the iPad, iPod Touch, Apple TV, the Apple Watch, and other apps and accessories that are related to these devices. So that is what we're going to do for the next couple of hours. Before we dive in, though, I just want to go over a few basic guidelines before we get started. This call is being recorded for podcast purposes, as well as uh, playback on Sight into Sound Radio. With that in mind, we ask that you stay muted unless you're asking a question or making a comment, and this is to ensure the quality of the call. Now, we don't use the raised hand feature on Zoom like many other calls do. So when you want to ask a question or make a comment, simply uh, unmute yourself, say your name, and then wait to be acknowledged by one of the facilitators, and that would be either me or Sandhya. Now, keep in mind, only the facilitators can recognize someone speaking. So please wait to be recognized uh, by either me or Sandhya before uh, jumping in to ask your question. And we ask that you not speak out or make exclamations while others are talking. When you want to announce yourself, you just wait until there's a break in the action and then uh, ask your question or make a comment. Now, once you have asked a question or answered one, we'd appreciate it if you'd give others a chance to participate. We just want to make sure that everyone gets an opportunity to ask questions and to answer questions, you know, the, the same two or three people don't have to answer all the questions. If you know the answer, you know, whether you've been on this call before uh, or not, you know, we want you to come on in and ask the question and answer it. We'd like to get as many people participating as we possibly can. And please make sure to eliminate any background noise. If we have to tell you twice that you have too much interference, then we may have to remove you of the, from the call, and we certainly don't want to do that. So please, please keep the background noise off, if you will. Let me just quickly run down the ways that you can mute and unmute yourself on the various devices. In the Zoom app on an iPhone, the mute button toggle is gonna to be at the bottom left corner of the screen. You double tap it to mute, then double tap that same button to unmute. Uh, if you're on an iPad or other smartphone, you're gonna find it more at the uh, top center of the screen and it acts the same way, it's a toggle button. On a Windows PC, you can toggle mute and unmute with the Alt-A command. On a Mac, it's Command-Shift-A. Also on the Mac and PC, the spacebar can be used as a push to talk function. You just hold the spacebar in, say what you wanna say and then release it and it puts you back on mute again. And if you're calling in on a regular phone line, you can toggle by using star six. So. Those are the ways that you can uh, mute and unmute yourself on all the different devices. All right. Well, with all that out of the way, I am going to briefly turn things over to Sandhya, and she's going to let us know about what's coming up in iBug this week. Sandhya? All right. Thank you, Stephen. All right. We have a busy week again. <laughs> so uh, today we are here right now with iBug Buzz. Tomorrow is the Mac Buzz Cafe. Oh, Mac Cafe. Uh, on uh, what? On Clubhouse, and we'll be discussing all issues relating to your Mac, and if you don't have a Mac, and so forth. That'll be from five to six. All times will be Central Time. Then on Wednesday we have Android Insight from seven to eight thirty. Again on the same Zoom conference line, discussing all things related to your Android devices, and we can also talk about the A Lady and her various uh uh <laughs> forms that she has all over our houses right mm -hmm. uh so that would be on on wednesday and then thursday we have ibug trekkie talk and that will be from 8 to 9 30 here again on zoom zoom conference line we'll be discussing season, uh the next generation season four episodes in eight and nine so watch them ahead of time and then come and discuss them with us 
And then on Friday, we have iBug Night of the Virtual Movies, and who knows what that will be? We don't know yet, but come back at the halftime or stick with us till the halftime and guess those awesome clues, and then we can find out what the movie is. All right, so that'll be Friday. Uh, we are off this weekend, but we I uh, will have to mention that we did have an awesome iBug Cafe yesterday, Shri. Uh, Shri, uh, Herbie, <laughs> Shri, Herbie, and Marion did an awesome job talking about various travel apps as we get ready for the summer season. So um, and there was Uber, and there was Travelocity, and there was Soundscape. So that, that thanks to our lovely volunteers, that is up on our website. So definitely check it out. Uh, so those are the various events happening this week. And then for us, our social media, we have our website, ibugtoday.org, I-B-U-G-T-O-D-A-Y.org is the best way to get information about all of our upcoming events and services. Definitely register. And uh, like I said, every well, I am saying now, everything, all of our services are free, free, free. Um, we have a Twitter account at ibugtoday. We have a Facebook page, facebook.com slash group slash iBug today. Those are great ways to keep abreast of various information about the Apple world and accessibility and where all those things intersect. The Facebook is a great place to post questions and get answers and help other people uh, get answers as well, if you know the answer. Uh, let's see, we have a mentoring program. If you are a new user of the iPhone and need help, we would love for you to complete the application on our website, and then we will match you up with one of our amazing advanced users. And the converse is true. If you are an advanced user and would like to help us, please complete the uh, application, and then we will get you into our program. Something exciting, we have our drawing because we are a 501c3 corporation, a nonprofit organization. And to that end, we are doing a little fundraiser uh, for a $10 donation. You get a chance to get a ticket for the drawing. It is a $500 gift card to the Apple store. Mm. And if you'd like to improve your chances, you could get a six tickets for $50. So please consider it and support us. We appreciate your help and support. So with that, Stephen, I will hand it back to you. Okay. Well, I just have a quick question before we move forward. Um, yes, sir. Is, is IMA going to be able to help take care, you know, kind of cover some of the costs of these gas prices if we're going to travel using some of these travel apps? I mean, it's yeah, in that Apple car that we're going to give you. Yeah. Okay. Just what thought I'd ask. Yeah. yeah. Always good to ask. No yeah. dumb questions, no, right? No dumb questions. Right. All Speaking right. of which, well, before we get to questions and our first segment, we would like to know who is joining us tonight. So we want to give everyone a chance to introduce themselves. Just tell us who you are, where you're calling from. And remember, you will need to unmute yourself in order to do that. And if you're new to the call, we would love to know how you found out about iBug and what iOS devices you are using. So we can get started with that. And if you were in the middle of the announcements and missed who I am, I am Stephen and I'm from Austin, Texas. This is Herbie remind, in Houston reminding you that to Zoom doesn't cost any gas money. Oh, thank goodness. Thank Good to have you, Herbie. Thomas Hutchinson, Grand Junction, Colorado. Hi, Thomas. Welcome. <coughs> Mary Dana. Warren. Oh, sorry. Oh, go ahead, Dana. Go ahead. Go ahead. All right, Dana. And who else? Mary Ward, Austin, Texas. Hi, Mary. Well, it's great to have Hello. you. Hello. This is Ned from Texas and happy <coughs> Pi Day. All right, happy Ned. Happy Pi Day. Happy Pi Day. <laughs> Chanel in Houston. Hi, Chanel. Okay, who's next? This is Jody yeah, in New Hampshire. And... All right, Jody, and who else? Deb from Wichita. Hi, Deb. Good to have you both. Hi, today. thank you. Marvin from Chicago. All right, Marvin, and who else? Rachel Wilson in Oklahoma City. 
Gretchen, welcome to both of you. Okay. Anyone else? This is Shree from Virginia, and Please. I have a, a virtual credit card to use for gas mileage. All right. Works for me. Thanks, Shree. <laughs> this is Terry from Arlington Heights, Illinois, and I wish I had an iBug virtual uh, <laughs> gift card to use. All right. Well, enter those sweepstakes and you never know, right, Terry? Welcome. <laughs> this All is right. Sandia from Houston. Hi, Sandia. Phoenix. Okay, we well, you kind of garbled it the first. What was your name? Uh, oh, Helene. Helene, it's Helene. Helene. Yeah, you're for some reason your connection is really poor, Helene. We can barely hear you, but we're glad to have you. Anybody else that hasn't had a chance to introduce themselves yet? Just Karen. Arlene. Karen, welcome. And who else? Arlene, North Carolina. Hi, Arlene. Good to have you. Hi. Michael in Houston. Michael. Hello, sir. Okay. Is there anyone else that hasn't had a chance yet? All right. Well, if if not, of course, we'll have another chance at the midway point, the halftime show, whatever we want to call it. Um, we have any new callers on the on the call tonight that haven't been on this particular call before? Mary, I know you personally, but ha have you been on the iBug Buzz call before? Once, 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 a okay. couple of weeks ago, and I oh, didn't okay. last week. So. Okay, good. Well, we're glad to have you. I've, I've missed you. a couple of weeks, so. Wait, you Cla are. I'm Stephen Kerr. Where do I know you from? I, <laughs> uh, I don't know. I, thought, I but I wasn't I, sure. I, wasn't I tend like, to. I, I tend to bounce around everywhere. Yeah, you do. <laughs> <laughs> you do. Any other new callers? There are any new callers that haven't been on this call before? Didn't I hear somebody named Gretchen? This Gretchen? Something I thought. Or did I match on that? Okay, never mind. I think from Oklahoma City. Okay, maybe not. Okay, well, if you want to chime in, Gretchen, feel free. We'd just like to know a little more about you if you uh, would be willing to do that. Um, all right, well, before we get to questions, Sandhya, I know we have something a little bit, well, special and a little bit different that we're going to do tonight. Uh, Apple, of course, had a major event last Tuesday, March 8th, and it was their, what did they call it, their peak performance event? Peak, P-E-E-K. P-E-E-K, yeah, peak, peak performance event. Take a peek at some of the new devices and big announcements that they made. So you want to kind of tell us how we're, how we're going to do this here in the first hour, and then, of course, we will get to your questions uh, at some point, but we thought it'd be great to kind of highlight some of the things that went on at the Apple event last week. All right, yes. So what we were hoping to do is just so we are all aware of what is coming out and what, you know, we want to put on our, you know, Santa's list or maybe what we want to spend that $500 gift card on, right? There are lots of options. So we are going to review some of the new products that were introduced last week. And then uh, after each uh, segment, then we will open it up for your questions. And maybe you had a chance to uh, watch the episode, your, you know, watch the presentation yourself, or maybe you read something and you could also be willing to share that with us as well. So, and then, so then at the, after that, then the second half, we will, uh, well, depending on how long all this will take and depending on your questions, and then we will resume with the questions after, after right. all the Apple event summary. All right. All right. Well, great. Well, the, the first thing that we're, I'm going to do a couple of things here. And then Herbie is going to chime in with uh, something. We're going to talk about the iPhone SE3. That was one of the big announcements that uh, was made at the event. Also, the fifth generation iPad Air. And then Herbie, I can't wait for this, even though I, I don't own a Mac, but it sounds really cool when I was looking at this. Herbie is going to talk a little bit anyway about the new desktop, the Apple desktop, the Mac Studio. You'll get more of that tomorrow night, I think, on the uh, Mac Buzz. 
But uh, Herbie is going to kind of touch on that a little bit tonight. So Apple's first media major media event of 2022 was last week. And uh, as we mentioned, several big announcements, one of which a new iPhone SE, the SE3. And the new iPhone SE3, Apple is calling it, if you, you know, buy into the hype. And of course, they're going to build this up big like they are everything. The most powerful and durable iPhone SE yet. It still uses Touch ID. And it's still about the size and shape of an iPhone 8. It uh, comes with Apple's A15 Bionic chip. Somehow, I, every time I say that, I feel like there should be some kind of, um, I don't know, R2-D2 <laughs> R2 thing. Sound or, effects, or, right? Yeah, echo sound <laughs> effects or, you know, A15 Bionic chip. But uh, it does come with that. And that, of course, is the same that's used in the iPhone 13. Now, it's supposed to be 1.8 times faster than the iPhone 8 and even faster compared to older models. Now, in my experience, you know, when I've gotten new devices, it always varies according to, you know, specs and user, I guess. But that is what they say, 1.8 times faster than iPhone 8 and even more so for some of the older iPhones. Uh, it does have advanced camera capabilities like smart HDR4, uh, photographic styles, deep fusion, if you're into that. And uh, Apple is touting improved performance in such areas as photo housing, gaming, and augmented reality. And it also has support for 5G for faster downloads and uploads, higher quality video streaming, real-time interactivity and apps. Now, as Apple this points out, and, and I certainly subscribe to this too, not all 5G bands are supported. So that is something to keep in mind, but it is supposed to come with that. As we all know from experience, speeds are subject to vary. Now the glass, I know a lot of you are curious about that. It's as tough as the glass on the back of an iPhone 13 Pro and iPhone 13. It is rated IP67 for water and dust resistant. And it's designed to protect against spills. So, you know, if you're kind of a messy person, I don't know that I'd want to try it, but at least they say that's supposed to protect against it. Now, battery life, you know, is always a big issue when we come with, you know, updates or uh, new iDevices. You know, if, if you listen to Apple, it's supposed to be better than that of the SE2, but may still not be quite on par with uh, Apple's other flagship devices. So, you know, it's kind of at your own risk with that. <clears throat> the screen is still around 4.7 inches with a large forehead and chin of the iPhone 8 design. Now, the cameras should still be more than adequate for OCR work, uh, but Apple just, uh, doesn't believe they're quite as good as advertised. But uh, still, if you want the touch, touch ID, don't mind up giving up some battery life and maybe a few other things to get it, then the new SE3 is supposed to be a great option. And the latest Apple processor, uh, this device is going to get uh, IO up updates for years to come. The glass on the back is going to let you charge it wirelessly. And the rest of the hardware should be more than enough to satisfy most users. Um, it comes in the following colors, Midnight, Starlight, and Product Red. <laughs> I don't know what those colors mean, but that's what it says. And it also features that good old home button that I know some of us like. The pricing starts at $429 for the 64 gigabyte version and up from there. The pre-ordering began last Friday and it'll be available in stores starting this Friday. So that is a quick rundown of the iPhone SE 3. So we can open it up for questions. And of course, anyone feel free to you know, chime in with answers. Uh, if you were able to watch the event, maybe, you know, some things that I missed because I know I didn't catch everything. So does anybody have any questions or, or even uh, any comments about the new uh, iPhone SE3 that's coming out? Anything you'd like to add or dispute? Yeah. This is Sunday. I think that's Helene yeah. again. Helene? Helene, you may need to call Hello. back in. Yeah, let's let's try. Can we? Are you there, Helene? Yeah, 
Yeah, I think you're going to have to. Can you hear me? Okay, we can hear you a little bit better now. Let's try it. Go ahead. Oh, yes, you can hear me. It's, yes. This is Helene. I was using the uh, ear, the ear, earbuds, and they they just never can communicate well. Hmm. Sorry to hear that. So I can. Yeah, I yeah. mean, I can hear you fine, but I can't speak to anyone and get understood. My question is, I have an SD uh, 2020, the second generation. Mm-hmm. And when you said it has the touch, the touch ID, I don't, I don't want to have either password, you know, whatever numbers mm-hmm. or the touch. Do I have to have that if I buy that phone? Okay. This is Herbie. Go ahead, Herbie. <clears throat> so, first of all, I actually would highly encourage you and everybody to make use of the security features just for your own protection, because the last thing you really want is your phone to get stolen and have somebody, you know, nab all the data off of it, and you might be surprised at what they would be able to get. So, I do actually highly encourage everybody to have at least the password, if nothing else, on their phone. And we've talked about that and how you can have secure passwords as well. But if you are not going to use them, yeah, you can turn all that off as you would in your current phone. You go to the settings in general and um, the uh, touch ID in your case and... Um, passwords and you'd be able to turn all that off but i do even if you're using your phone for basic stuff i still don't recommend that you or anybody turns that stuff off and actually encourage you to make full use of it you know just for your own protection in case your device ever gets stolen or yeah. lost yeah yeah i think we want to yes. have some kind of protection if nothing else go ahead Helene. yeah this is this is helene um i wear the phone around my neck everywhere but What I find happens, I live in Woodstock, New York, and I have been in town, there's a lot of noise, and I'm trying to put in those four digits, and I'm touching things, and the earbuds, as I said, don't work very well, and I'm trying to hear what they're saying of what number I'm tapping, and then I have to keep, you know, I did the fingerprint, and it didn't like it. So then I had to do, and I spent so much time that if I had an emergency and needed to call someone, I wouldn't be able to do it. Gotcha. Yeah, that is a problem. This is Herbie. Go ahead, Herbie. So actually, just so you and everybody else knows, um, that is not quite the case. Siri will let you make phone calls without the phone being unlocked. So that you is true. would have been able to call somebody using Siri. Um, also, I think you can call 911 if you have that type of emergency without unlocking your phone. Um, the emergency button, I believe. I'm not sure if that calls 911 or if it will let you call somebody else. I've never used it for obvious reasons, but um, you can still make phone calls um, using Siri. So, All right. Okay. Any... And this is Helene. I just have one more question. Okay, go ahead real phone. quick. I bought it February of last year, and now it's March. So I've had it for a year and a month. It was a really hard switch over, and it took a long time to move. It it was not seamless, that's for sure. So um, I'm curious, only owning it for a year and a month, is it, you know, something that I shouldn't do and just wait until I have it longer? And then any advice on that? Yeah, that's probably, you know, kind of a judgment thing of, you know, how much you want of the enhanced features. Does anyone else have any opinions on that? Okay. This is Herbie. This is Shree. Uh, oh, Shree, go ahead, go ahead and then Herbie, I'll come to you. Go ahead, Shree. Yeah, I would say, um, Helene, do you know how much memory you have on your current phone? 64. 64. So... You know, that's really my only concern that I would tell you to, if you were planning to upgrade, um, I would suggest you not at least try to get the 128, so the 64, um, especially if you are the kind of person that want to keep the device for a long period of time. I would say personally, um, if, if finance is an issue for you, I would just stick with it because the only thing you're going to get is that faster processor and the 5G. I'm not too sure about the 5G because it's really the, the low end 5G you're going to get. So if you're fully happy with it, I would stick with it unless you feel mm-hmm. like 
you're not getting something out of your phone right now. Okay. Um, yeah, well, thank, thank you, you. And I did buy the iPad. I just ordered the iPad 9. Um, and so that's coming March 24th to the March 31st. So I will have a newer device with uh, a lot of two, 256. Excellent. Excellent. All right. Well, Herbie, real quick, we'll get your comment and then we'll move on um, to another overall, question. Overall, kind of pretty much I agree with Shree. If you're happy with it, you probably don't need to upgrade. But um, aside from the 5G, maybe the other benefit might be uh, you know, an improved battery life, perhaps. But of course, that's going to remain to be seen with other users' experience. So I think I'd probably wait a couple months and see what other people's experiences are with mm -hmm. the newer model and then decide if it's something you need to worry about for you or not. Um, if you're not doing much with the internet, then 5G isn't going to be really that much of a benefit in that regards. And yeah, um, that's pretty much Great. all I have. Thank you. Sounds... Excellent. Well, thanks Jody, for your question, Celine. I'm sorry, Jody. Uh, I just had a quick comment. Go ahead. Um, if it's okay. Yeah. Uh, the, the, uh, the, SC, the SC2 is running on the 11 processor and the uh, mm -hmm. SC3 is running on the 13 processor. So I don't think there's that much difference. It's not like trying to go from the SC original, which was a, a mm -hmm. six uh, operating system, jumping to an 11. You know, right. going from six to eleven is a big jump, or going from eleven to thirteen isn't that big a jump. So I, I have the two, and I'm not planning to get a three. All right, very good. Thank you. Any other? Abraham, Abraham, go ahead. Uh, can I ask a new question? Yes. Well, it, it, yeah, if it pertains to the SE three, yes. No, it's a, it's a new topic. I mean. Uh, no, we're we're actually doing uh, kind of a rundown of the Apple event last week. Oh, okay. So we'll, we'll get to your questions though, eventually though. So hang Actually, on to I it a, and we'll come back to that. I had a quick question about the iPhone SE 3 that just came out. Okay, go ahead. So um, I have a two right now, SE number two. I am just wondering like, because I heard uh, in the rundown that the battery is uh, better. Does anybody know if the battery is like much better than the number two or that still be determined? Well, that's the kind of to be determined. I did touch on the battery life. It's supposed yeah. to be better. Yeah. Um, but, you know, as we know, that's kind of a user's discretion kind of opinion thing. So okay. it, it okay. does say that it is supposed to be better than, uh, than the, some of the previous devices, but not quite up to par. If, if you read Apple Viz, they say it's yeah. not quite up to par as far as like with some of the other flagship devices. So again, mm -hmm. that's kind of a judgment call if you want to take a a chance on that. Does anybody else have any opinions or comments? Shree, go ahead. I was just going to say about the battery, you know, the battery efficiency is occurring by the processor, not because of the battery. So the, the, the 15 Bionic is more efficient, so it uses the battery more efficiently. Mm -hmm. I don't think the battery spec itself changed. That's a good point. Okay. Yeah. All right. Any other questions or comments about the SE3 before we move to the fifth generation iPad Air? This is Terry. Go ahead, Terry. Yeah, um, I know you were talking about the Bionic, but I don't think it. This my question <laughs> refers to that. But you talked about something about what did you say? A chin and forehead, something or another. Oh, the but measurements. I was, yeah, I was talking. I don't about, know those terms actually. Uh, I guess it's where the, yeah, it's just the shape of the iPhone and the size of the screen. That's that's what I was referring to. It's four point seven inches. I guess, yeah. I I haven't seen the eight, the forehead and chin of the iPhone eight design. So, does anyone know what that actually means? This, this is, is Deb. Free. Deb, go ahead. Um, I have an SE2. Um, what what I think that refers to is they call it a bezel that's at the top and the bottom. Yeah, it's just a area where the screen doesn't touch to, and the the bottom I know is where that touch ID that home button is at. So okay. that's all that is. I think. Okay, that's great, uh, Shri. So did the physical shape change from the SC? Because I thought it was the same body. The yeah. chassis was the same. Yeah, well, that's what it, it sounds like. You know, the glass is supposed to be better, but it looks like the size is still the same, mm -hmm. is what it, it sounds like. 4.7, I, I assume that was the size of 
the other, but it just has the shape, I guess, of what the iPhone 8 design is. But of course, I don't have an SE2, so I don't know if that's the same thing. Um, <clears throat> yeah, it's supposed to be the same size, I guess. This is Deb again. Go ahead, Deb. Um, I upgraded from an iPhone 7, which was exactly the same as the 8, to this SE2, and it was exactly the same phone. You could use the case that you had from the 7, mm -hmm. et cetera. And my understanding is that is true for the new SE3 as well, okay. that you'd be able to use all the same, the case, um, if you had, I also used a leftover screen protector that I had, uh, mm -hmm. that I hadn't used yet. So all that worked. And I'm, I'm thinking that it's probably going to be the same for that three. Okay. Very good. All right. Well, let's move along to the fifth generation iPad Air. If you still have questions about the SE3 or uh, anything else, we can um, take that when we get to your questions on a regular topic. So Moving on to the fifth generation iPad Air. Now, the biggest thing that, that I've been reading that, that Apple and everyone else has been touting about this is that it now uses the same M M1 chip that is found in the MacBook Air, the Mac Mini, and the low-spec MacBook Pro. And it's supposed to bring the Air in line with the iPad Pro, which uh, I guess some of you know was updated last year to use the M1 chip. If you believe Apple, the eight core CPU is supposed to offer up to 60% more performance than the A4 chi uh, A14 chip that was found in the previous Air. And the eight core uh, GPU is supposed to deliver up to two times faster graphics performance compared to the previous Air. Now, Apple says this is supposed to improve functions and experiences like uh, editing multiple streams of 4K video, gaming, redesigning a room in 3D, uh, realistic augmented reality, or AR, as we call it. The only other notable changes that I've been able to see are the inclusion of an ultra-wide front camera, which is supposed to let the new Air support the Apple center stage video conferencing feature. It's supposed to automatically pan to keep users in view as they move around, and the camera will detect them too, and as opposed to zo uh, basically smoothly zoom them out to include them in the conversation. So that sounds pretty neat. Uh, there's also support for 5G cellular networks. And the advanced cameras and compatibility with latest accessories is supposed to give a lot of people like students and gamers and content creators like myself <laughs> to increase their productivity, creativity, and self-expression. The pricing... It's kind of interesting here. It starts at $599 for 64 gigabytes of storage with the option to bump up to 256 GB. There is no 128 GB option for the fifth generation iPad Air, by the way. So keep that in mind. So you go either from um, 64 gig, then you go to 256. There is no 128. So that's pretty interesting. Your color choices are starlight, blue, space gray, pink, and purple. Yeah. And like the iPhone SE3 pre-ordering started last Friday, and it will be available beginning this coming Friday. So that is an overview of the fifth generation iPad Air. As I kind of stumbled through it there, does anybody have any questions or comments about that? Anyone thinking of getting one? This is Shree. Go ahead, Shree. Stephen, do you know what the price is for the 256? Like with the cost difference? Yeah, I didn't see that. I, I didn't have that here. So uh, we can probably okay. try to look that's that okay. up for you, though. No, that's okay. Anybody this else? Go ahead, Shree. I was just going to say, you know, to me, this sounds like uh, don't bother buying an iPad Pro because this seems to do pretty much everything and you're going to save like 500 bucks. Well, that's kind of what I was wondering because if, I mean, if they're putting the same chip in, you know, I mean, is it just a question of a few features here and there that the iPad this Pro may have Herbie? 
Why don't you, you can add some light on so that. So this is where it's going to get, because the iPad Pro, of course, has the larger screen. So depending on who right. is purchasing it, what are you wanting it for? iPad Pro, I think it, the one thing it does have that the iPad, uh, the other ones don't have is the four speaker setup. So if you're wanting to watch movies, for instance, with the iPad that might be something worth considering. Probably iPad Pro, I'm guessing, because it's larger, would have a improved battery life. But um, if you want just a regular old iPad, you're not too worried about the screen size. And yeah, this seems like it would be the uh, ideal model. Okay. Very good. Um, I actually have a question. What is the difference between the iPad Air and the iPad Mini? I mean, they're both smaller screens, but how much, I mean, how much, how much different are they? Anyone have any thoughts on that? This is Shri. Shri? Well, obviously the screen size, what is it? It's like, uh, what is it? Uh, six point something? Mm -hmm. Is it seven? I'm trying to, I, I, I apologize. I don't know what the mini screen size is, but one thing I will say um, between the two, uh, you're going to get a much bigger screen and it's going to be, it's relatively thin compared to the, um, the whole concept of the air, air you know, the AirPad, um, iPad, sorry, iPad um, Air. Uh, one other thing that I was going to say that's probably a little bit um uh the mini probably is you know be able to put in your purse and take it with you i know that my wife likes that it's just the fact it's a little bit smaller but uh i would say from a price perspective the the air seems to be very reasonable i think this one they really hit the market correctly i i would suggest you know not to buy the 64 i think that's just way too low memory on the yeah. unit uh, it's not gonna especially if you want to keep it for a longer period of time um i probably didn't quite answer your question there steven so. no no that that's fine that that makes perfect sense and yeah the 599 for 64 gig that's i thought that was actually pretty good price all right any other questions about or comments about the fifth generation ipad air and then we'll move on to herbie's presentation and remember, if you think of some more questions from what we've covered, we can always continue to cover those along with your regular questions when we get to those. All right. Well, hearing none, Herbie, are you ready to talk a little about the Mac Studio? Yes, indeed. Well, this is also especially designed for content creators. So, Stephen, you know, if you want to get your first Mac, I know of a little club you can go to and ask some questions and you can plug yeah. in that good sounding mic into it and everything. So um, especially this new Mac, the Mac Studio. It Now we're gonna go into more details tomorrow night on the Mac Buzz, which is in, going to be on Clubhouse as usual in the iBug Today Club from five to six central time. So be there. But the Mac Studio is Two powered by two M1 trip chips, what they're calling M1 Ultra, and all it is is that the performance of two M1 chips, so great uh, improvements. And the Mac Studio is uh, comes in two forms. It's a little bit bigger than a Mac Mini. I guess it's like seven inches tall or whatever. And there's the Mac Studio and the Mac Studio Ultra. The Mac Studio will start you at a base price of $1,395, roughly. The Mac Studio Ultra will start you at a base price of over $3,000. Depending on customizations, that's going to, of course, affect the price. But it's supposed to be ultra fast and... The biggest and the baddest, the baddest and all that uh, stuff. And they also have a new display for Macs that you can get. And you do not need um, the Mac Studio for this. It'll work, it looks like, on any Mac. And the display itself is now powered by an M1 chip, making for better design. It also has a six-speaker setup. And that'll start you at $1,395. For more details, 
please visit us tomorrow for the Mac Buzz again on Clubhouse 5 to 6. If you have not gotten on Clubhouse, it is free. You do not need an invitation. Just download the Clubhouse app from the App Store, fill in the details with your phone number and whatnot, and then look for the iBug Today Club, and you'll be good to go. All right. Yeah, that sounds pretty exciting. All right, Herbie. I may have to check that out myself. So, uh, briefly, are there any questions about the Mac Studio, or we can even continue to take some more from the SE3 and the iPad Air, if you like? This is Ibrahim. Ibrahim, go ahead. So, the new iPad Air, does it have um, a touch ID built to the side of like the last one, or just face ID? Yeah, I did not see that. Anybody want to weigh in on that? This is Shri. Shri, go ahead. I believe it has a touch ID on the side button. Okay, cool. Okay. Thank you, Ibrahim. Any other questions for Herbie or for myself? This is Shri. Go ahead, Shri. So Herbie, did the price go down? Because I thought the Studio Max was two grand starting. Nope, it's a little bit. I forget the exact price, but it starts in the one thousand range. It may be like one thousand nine hundred, and of course, this is just the base price. This doesn't even factor in what kind of customizations you make, you know, like hard drive space and any add-ons and things like that. So, okay. um, yep, and that's just for the Mac Studio, not the Mac Studio Ultra. And the difference is that the Mac Studio Ultra has the two M1 chips. So, oh, it's like a double this M1. Is Mary, Mary this go is ahead. I, I think it was one thousand nine hundred, which to me, I'm sorry, that's two thousand, and um, I'm pretty <laughs> yeah. sure that it was nineteen hundred, and um. I don't know. I think that if you're if you're just average blind person, you might be just as well off with the mini still. But that um, I, I'm almost positive it was 1900. But it so, does sound like a really nice machine. Go ahead, Herbie. So the, the you know it's really designed, of course, for high end right. content creators. You know, if you're yes. doing stuff with video, you'd especially want something like this. Um, yes. Maybe really heavy audio production, especially like if you're in a recording studio. But if you're just wanting to check your mail and do some general web surfing, then yeah, probably a, an old fashioned Mac Mini might be what you want but uh steven you know because he does podcasts and stuff maybe oh he yeah wants to, he, he might be interested in a you might know, be interested in reasonably that. priced studio ultra for instance you know to see what new heights he can take his uh, productions to yeah if i could just start making enough money off those podcasts to buy one then that you know we could talk about that for right. sure and yeah, uh, maybe i'll put out because put out such good podcasts that it'll pay for itself in a year you know there you go you could definitely <laughs> upload to youtube and have somebody edit your videos and i think shri was all right, before let's keep going. Yeah. Yeah. all right uh terry go ahead um i heard i forget what radio show it was on last week that if you if you really have money to burn and you want to buy all the accessories that come with that studio, you can pay as much as ten thousand dollars. Wow, I believe it. So uh, that gives you the really the cream of the crop, and maybe somebody they said you know it would be for for professionals. So mm -hmm. right, all right. Any other questions about the Mac Studio? Is Ibrahim? Uh, Ibrahim, go ahead. So these Mac Studios, are they like just ultra Mac minis or are they like Mac desktops? Herbie? So um, this is Herbie. A Mac mini is oh, essentially um, a portable. We got somebody muted here. Yeah. Okay. I muted everybody right. and just kind so, of wind it up uh, because okay. they can come and listen to your clubhouse tomorrow. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, um, but the Mac Mini is essentially a desktop that's just kind of really like a portable desktop. And the Mac Studio is just slightly bigger than a Mac Mini. Um, but another reason why you should definitely come on Clubhouse tomorrow, Brad is usually on there and he actually has the uh, Mac Mini at least, so he can talk a lot more about what that looks like. I've <clears throat> only heard other people's descriptions, so I'm actually not even an expert on the Mac Mini. I'm more familiar with the...
All right. Very good. Well, um, yeah, definitely join everyone on Clubhouse tomorrow night for the Mac Buzz. You can find out more about the Mac Studio, the Mac Studio Ultra, and some of these other things that uh, they're going to be coming out with with that. And we've got about 15 minutes left before the midway point. So now we can open it up for any and all of your questions that are iOS related. Is it Abraham? Go ahead, Abraham. Yeah, so um, last week I found out what was causing my Outlook uh, email problem. And somebody mentioned to me that I have to change my email servers. I think uh, I think I had it on pop, the pop email server and somebody mentioned to me, I said, change it to iMac server. Is there a right. way to do that on an iPhone or has to be just do a PC or a Mac? <laughs> okay, bless you. Um... So you're wanting to change from the pop to the IMAP? Yeah, so I can get okay. my Outlook email working again on the phone. Okay. Does anyone have any ideas about how to do that? Or if it can be done on this the This is iPhone? Herbie. Go ahead, Herbie. Um, yes, it can. The, uh, you would have to look under, go to your settings, and then... So first of all, are you talking about the Outlook app or just the Outlook mail in general? Like, are you Out, using the default mail app? Uh, Apple Mail with Outlook inside of it. Okay, so so you're using the Apple Mail app to connect to an Outlook address. Yeah, and uh, and uh, it's having a couple of problems that they so told me to change my server. The easiest thing would be to do, honestly, would just be to go to Mail and probably delete the account because then you could reset it up from scratch. And because usually those things have predetermined settings to begin with. Um, I know Gmail does, and I know other mail, you know, pr big name mail accounts do. Um, I don't remember if you can change. You'd have to go into the account under mail and settings otherwise yeah. and look for like, you know, do a lot of exploring. There might be some server settings and I, but otherwise um, you should be when able I, to. Because when I deleted it and, and came back with it, uh, right. it just asked me to put in my email and the password and then it synced up. It didn't give me any kind of server settings right so, so it should automatically have defaulted to imap when it did that because unfortunately it did not from what i'm seeing i'm still having the problem with it so somebody else so uh, okay so so did you've actually seen that it says pop three so, uh, so somebody told me that's the only thing they could think of because i talked to apple and uh, other people and they tried everything else with me and that's the only thing they can think of interesting because this if, is Shri. go ahead Shri. yeah Shri. your only option is pop on the on the Outlook. Okay. You don't, have, you don't have an option to select IMAP in there. Hmm. Okay. Okay. Because I, I did talk to somebody in the mention that's probably what's causing the problem with the Outlook server. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, it would be for most others, but so they don't even have an option then. No. That's last true. time I checked, last time yeah. I checked, it was still a pop. Interesting. Okay. Okay. Well, yeah. sorry about that, Abraham. <laughs> yeah, because yeah. unfortunately, I'm still not getting any of the messages into the box. Yeah. So I thought that would be the only other problem. Yeah, but anyway. David. David, go ahead. Uh, I think you may want to consider using the Outlook app. It's very accessible, and I, I use it for my work email, and I find it very easy to use. Um, in fact, they told us not to try to set up our email on Apple Mail or Android Mail or anything anymore, and we have to use the uh, Outlook app because um, there are security concerns with, I guess, with the Apple Mail app as far as interfacing with the Microsoft. This is uh, Office 365, but I don't know if you have yeah. Office 365 or or have the free Outlook account. <clears throat> do you, do you, which one do you have, uh, Abraham? Uh, I just have one Outlook account, and I use it for, for personal, so I don't feel the need to download a separate app. Okay. But I'll, I'll continue yeah. working on the problem. Okay, Herbie, Herbie, we'll go to you, and then we'll move to yeah, question. Yeah, just real quick, so I concur with David. When my like our U University email, um, we had we were forced to switch to the Outlook app last year. But one thing I do you do need to know is that Mail on the Mac handles it differently than the phone mail, and so you may be able to use like the default Mail client on your Mac, but not on the phone. And if you come to the Mac Club tomorrow. We can talk more about the that side of it, but um, okay. they do treat it separately. All okay, right. sounds good. Well, sorry about that, Abraham. Hope we can uh, clear that up for you. Okay, new question, new topic. Who would like to go next? Ta Thomas Hutchinson in Grand yes. Junction, Colorado. Yes, sir. Thomas, go right ahead. Yeah, just I'll make it real quick. Um, 
At one time, they in the phone settings, there was an option for automatic answer, and you can set the time for that. I looked in the phone settings, and I can't seem to find it. Does anybody know where that's at, or did they take that away? Thomas is done speaking. All right, Thomas. So the automatic answer, you're wanting to set a certain number of rings, and you're looking for the setting in there. Okay, anyone, anyone help him out there? where that might be in settings. Anybody know? It might be something we need to look up. Thomas, we'll see if we can do that. This is Terry. Terry, you have an answer? Um, I don't yet, but I, cause I missed the question. What, what is he wanting the, to know? The question is he's wanting a, uh, to set automatic answer to a certain number of rings, and he's trying to find where in settings he can do that. Oh, okay. I'll be glad to look that up. Yeah, we'll, we'll look that up tonight, Thomas. We'll see if we can find out that answer for you. All right. Thank I know you I've, so much. I know I've yeah, seen it, used, too. I just have to yeah, look. It used to be in phone settings, and you can set it to, they had uh, three seconds, five seconds, whatever but it's kind of nice when it's in your pocket and you don't want to pull it out and all that stuff. Yeah, so. Absolutely. Well, we'll see if we can find that out an answer for you here as, as soon as possible. Uh, if not tonight, then maybe we can put it on the Facebook group if you're in that. Oh, all yeah, right. I'll be, I'll be in the club tomorrow and that's okay. thing, so I'll be around. Perfect. All right. Anyone have a new topic or new question? This is Herbie. Go ahead, Herbie. So I have not played with this, but somebody actually mentioned on a call we were on this morning that um, for anybody that's interested is now, I guess, with the latest iOS, which, by the way, there is a new iOS update, a new watch update and all that. But I guess now the Apple Fitness Plus is fully accessible if you have the latest iOS and latest Apple Watch. So oh, I thought okay. I'd pass it along for anybody that might be interested in checking that out. And uh, yeah, you're referring to 15.4. Yes, 15.4. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay, and I think that just came out today. So yep. that's some good news for for those of you who uh, use that. All right, who would like to go next? A new comment or a new topic? We've got about eight minutes left till we get to the midway point of the call. So a new question, new problem. <laughs> This is Terry. Go ahead, Terry. I, I'm sorry. I, I think I found the answer to Thomas's question. Okay, excellent. Um, according to what I'm reading here, um, you go into settings, then accessibility, and then you go to touch. Yeah. Um, and then call audio routing. And then you can tap auto answer calls and that will allow calls to be uh, answered automatically or are there some other options too in there so does it give it like uh, increments or decrements for how many rings to set it to um it's saying that, the decrement button yeah decrement which means go the, lower and increment goes higher yes mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. so it's under accessibility, Thomas. And then you go to what else, Terry? Um, then you go to... Um, to touch? Then you go to touch. And then you've got auto answer calls is, I think, the first thing there. Okay. And then you've got a decrement and an um, increment button. Okay. So to either decrease the the amount of time or to increase the amount of time before you, the call is answered. All right. Very good. Thank you, Terry. That was, that was quick work. This is Sandia. <laughs> so, Sandia, go ahead. So I would just add uh, one other uh, thing that if for anybody in any setting that you're looking for, there is always a search option. And so you could type, maybe you just type auto because I tried typing auto <clears throat> answer and I didn't get mm -hmm. anything, but you know, you type in auto and then you get all these different things in there. So it's a good tool to have because there are so many settings that 
you know, we have covered a lot of them in yeah, a recent no cafe, doubt. but uh, for a quick, quick look, you can uh, do that. So thank you. That's a good point. And true. even say answer, you could probably put an answer and see what you get there. Terry, go ahead. I actually asked Siri, how do I find auto answer? And these are, she brought up several different um, options or that I could go to read. Oh, okay. Well, that's an excellent I use suggestion. That all Sonia. the time. Yeah. All right. Very good. Well, Thomas, I hope that helps you and answers your question. And that. Yeah, thank you so you. much. I appreciate that. You bet. This is Shri. Go ahead, Shri. Just a quick question about the auto answer. Does that mean calls will not go to voicemail? That is a good no, question. No, basically what it means is instead of your phone ringing like six times and then going to voicemail, it just means that you can set it, say, after two rings, it will answer so the call will then be connected. But essentially that means it would not go to voicemail because it's going to answer whether you... <laughs> well, now, correct. Yeah, you're yeah. right. Yeah, yeah. It, exactly right. Yeah, it wouldn't go to... Now, I think you can press the side button and send it to voicemail if you choose to do that but yeah okay that was my that was actually my question is well what if you don't want to auto answer at that particular time is there's a way to send it to voicemail before it auto answers and i think that yeah that makes sense hitting it to the side button just like if i get a call and it i, I can do that I, I wondered if auto answer would do the same thing This is Shree. Shree, go ahead. Yeah, I would just say, you know, if you're going to do that, you need to also uh, check with your carrier to see what their voicemail limitations are. Um, obviously, this is not going to go to voicemail. I'm just, I'm just trying to picture, you know, if you say two rings, is you know, if you're not by the phone, it's the call is, it's activated. Yeah, yeah, that's so, what I'm thinking too. Um, I can see different advantages to it, of course. Mm -hmm. but this is Herbie. Go ahead, Herbie, and then we'll move I on. I think it's just fair to say that if you're going to use auto answer, it's you know, it's probably really designed for somebody that has like limited mobility options or whatever. Right. So, you know, and if you're gonna use it, you know, make sure you're somebody that always has your phone with you. And but that is definitely a feature that is probably not for the majority of people. So Right. Good point. All right. Well, we've got a couple of minutes left before we get to the midway point and the movie thing. So this a quick Dee. question here. Dee, go ahead. Can somebody explain to me what direct touch is? Direct touch? Mm-hmm. Okay. Does anyone You find have... it in some apps. In fact, I asked Siri and she gave me several different definitions and examples, but I still don't know what it means. All right. Well, does anybody know what direct touch means? That can help D out. Well, this is Chanel. Oh. Uh, Chanel and then Mary. Chanel, yeah. go ahead. Okay. So from what I understand, and I, I don't... From how I've used direct touch, it's basically a way to use an app kind of without voice, without the voiceover gestures being sent to that app. So some apps make use of certain gestures on their own. I'm thinking of the blindfold games. Oh. There may be others where there's audio and, and speech, but it's not necessarily voiceover. And so it's just kind of a way of um, making voiceover not interpret what your gestures are from what I understand. Okay. Very good. Mary, did you have something to add? Yeah, another uh I was gonna say that another thing that it gets used for is oh like the example of it that I can think of is the game seven little words that a lot of people play. They wanted to they're a small company and they said they only wanted to make one interface that could be used both by both Android and iPhone users. So it doesn't really make full use of voiceover and it has that direct touch. And there's like a couple of things that you can do, but it, I'm really confused about whether voiceover is on at all in there. I, mm -hmm. I think it's not, um, you know, so sometimes companies use that 
so that they only have to make one app for the whole market. And mm -hmm. it's not as good as voiceover, but it's, if it's just a, you know, a dumb game, it'll get you through. Okay. Excellent. All right. I hope that so this answers is your the... question, Dee. Go ahead, real quick. Okay. So what you're saying, maybe with direct touch, you reach up in that area for, see, I've run across it in one of the blindfold games, like Crazy Eights. There's an area, if I touch it, it says direct touch. So if I touch in there or something, then it's going to tell me what the cards are or something like that instead of flicking and using voiceover this is chanel go ahead chanel um it's still using voiceover to read out your cards but it's essentially saying to voiceover don't interpret this as a normal uh flick i am you know you're we're using this gesture that only reads the cards so it kind of it uses voiceover, but it's also taking over voiceover. So I know that doesn't make a whole lot of sense, but <laughs> no, I'm still lost. Okay. I know. Well, yeah, I guess we I'll try it in there and see what it actually maybe does. Yeah, I was gonna say just kind of play around with it and see if and maybe come back at some point. Maybe we can address it again this in the is future. Herbie real quick. Yeah, we okay. we're getting, we really need to move forward, Herbie, with the halftime. It's just after eight, so um, I think let's put that on hold if we okay. can. Let's let's I put just that had on a hold. quick summary if that might help, but okay. Okay, uh, Sandhya, if you're ready. Are you there, Sandhya? All right, thank you so there much, There you are. Steven. That was a great review of all the new toys that are out there for us. So, and now we'd like to uh, get uh, anybody who didn't get to say hello, we'd love for you to say hello and say who you are, where you're from. If you didn't get a chance to do so the first time. Ibrahim from Boston. Hello, Ibrahim, welcome. Hey. Okay, welcome. Anybody else? Didn't get to say hi. It's Kathy D. from Tulsa. Kathy, welcome. And Dee, welcome. Thank you. All right. Anybody else want to say hello? Hello, hello. Roy from Fort Worth. Hello, sir. Good evening. Howdy, howdy. howdy. Okay, anybody else? All right. Okay, well, thank y'all for uh, that. And uh, so now it's uh, time to find out what we're going to be watching at iBug Night at the Virtual Movies. And with those perpetually perplexing clues we have, I don't know who we have. I think it might be the iBug guy. iBug guy, are you out there? Yes, 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 I am here. <laughs> oh, good. Good guess. <laughs> okay, it's a... <laughs> yep. Love Revolutionary is still on hiatus. So hiatus, okay. No, no telling when he will be back. No telling, okay. Uh, Enjoy it while we're I back. am here. Where did my headphone go? Okay, all right. Hey, I don't know, where's my headphone? Hey, hang on, hang on. You know? Okay, Mr. McCulloch, you can come back in, sorry. All right, we are getting ready to do our clues for the movie. Did we say when the movie is? No. All right, so our Friday night movie is this Thursday. <laughs> at, oh, Friday at 7.30 p.m. The pre-movie social. And 8 o'clock thereabouts, we'll start the movie. And as soon as it's over, we will have fun with Dick and Jane or whoever else shows up. And lots of trivia. So be there for that right here on this very same Zoom channel. All those times are central time. Uh, oh, I was going to also mention uh, in honor of uh, Thai Day, I'm all dressed up and I have my eye bug tie on and so and of course it's in our red black and white colors uh pie or tie what what did you say i heard i heard that today was tie day yeah 
No, it's I thought it's Pi Day. This is Ned is Pi Day. Oh, and, and not three point one four PI. You're the PI engineer. Three point one four. You know. Oh, uh, never mind. Never mind. All right, take off the tie. Keep going. All right, get rid of that tie. Have it yeah. on the wrong day. When is yeah. tie day anyway? Someone look that up. So I'll be ready. <laughs> I don't for even tonight. like to wear ties. Okay, keep going. Keep going. All right, now it is time for Marco. <laughs> He's being Man, strangled by a tie. Five fabulous clues, maybe six again, oh. because I am planning to stump the audience. So I may have to throw in one extra give it away clue. All right, is everyone ready? Rules you, are do not over the rules. Did you go over the rules? I am trying to if you didn't interrupt me. Oh, the sorry. Rules are sorry, sorry. To say your name and wait to be recognized by me and then you may guess a title of the movie. All right, get your finger ready on your mute buttons. And here we go. Clue number one. The setting of this week's film is back in a state that we have seen several times before. Like last week. <laughs> Ooh. It is set in a play in a state that we have seen several times before. Uh, Miss Kathy. Kathy. Do we have to guess the movie or just the state? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> the movie. movie titles only. But for you, Kathy, oh, you can sorry. guess the state. <laughs> Well, I, I missed the movie, but I noticed that it was L.A. Confidential, so I'm thinking California. She is good. Yes, is so yes, good. yes. You got the correct state. All right. Moving on to clue number this two. Uh-oh. Did somebody want to jump Brooks, in there? Brooks, Brooks. Go ahead, Brooks. Brooks. How about L.A. Story? L.A. Story. That would be too easy and too boring. No, we are not going to show the same movie twice. It's another movie. This is Shri. Oh, that's a different movie. Okay. Shri. San Andreas. This is the Ibrahim. San Andreas is incorrect. Ibrahim and last guest from clue number uh, one. Go ahead. Uh, Hotel California. Hotel California. Is that a movie? All right. Uh, no. Good oh. try, but we are okay. moving on. Okay. Okay. Go. Clue number two, role models are what this week's film is all about. Uh, I think you're gonna go on to clue number three. Next, Mr. McCulley, go. All right, nobody's gonna take a guess. No. All right. Clue number three. The film gives full weight to public opinion in the community where it is set. <laughs> the film gives full weight to public opinion in the community where it is set. That's a clue? It's a D. D. <laughs> Alcatraz. <laughs> Alcatraz. Ooh, that would be interesting. Community. Uh -huh. See the public opinion of that place. This is Terry. This is Shree. <laughs> Terry. I think this film should be set in the state of confusion because I'm really confused. Okay, keep going. Is, this is Shree. Oh, idea. Shree, go ahead. Dirty Harry. Dirty Harry. Ooh, that's another good movie, but unfortunately not what we're watching this week. 
All right, moving on to clue number three. Oh gosh, only number three? Oh no, that was clue number three. Clue That's number four. four. It has inspiration, no, it has inspiring locker room speeches and difficult moral decisions. Ibrahim? Ibrahim. Is it bring it on? Bring it on. Yes. No. Yes. <laughs> no, no. Sorry. Good try. Ah, so close, but yet so far. OK, keep going. Anybody else? Do I need to repeat the clue? I kind of stumbled on that one. Yeah, you did. It, the movie, it has inspiring locker room speeches and difficult moral decisions. This is Shree. Shree. Varsity Blues. Varsity Blues is getting closer. We have a locker room in Varsity Blues, but that is not the movie we'll be watching. <sighs> okay, come on, next. All right. This is Put Karen. Clues together. Oh, oh Karen. Karen. First time. Um, something about the Titans. Say that one more time. Something about the Titans. What's that movie something with Denzel Washington the and the Titans? Titans. I don't know Titans. that one. I know something about Mary. <laughs> <laughs> I think she, I think she's trying to say, remember the Titans. Yes, oh, yes, thank remember you. Remember the Titans. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, time so, to go. Almost not. That's sort of got a locker room scene, I think. <laughs> okay. But otherwise, we'll just remember the Alamo and move on. This is Shri. Keep going. Okay. All right, Shri. You only get one guess. Coach Carter. Say one more time. Coach Carter. Coach Carter. What? what? I'm consulting with my, oh my he, he forgot. I was going to say, apparently not. <laughs> ding, 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 ding. Coach uh, Carter. Three, three weeks in a row. Three weeks oh, in a row. Oh my God. Three weeks in a row. Is the movie we'll be watching that biopic about the, based on the true story of Ken Carter? the fabulous high school star basketball player from Richmond High, and then comes back in later to coach his team living in poverty. All right, so very good, Shri. It, of course, stars Samuel L. Jackson, and a bunch of other people that I don't remember other than Ashanti. Ashanti? Ashanti. Ashanti. R&B singer. So. Can I say something? This is Shri. Shri, yes. I told Sandhya yesterday I'm going to do a three-peat. A three-peat? Oh, wow. And he did. Very You're good. Psychic. Psychotic. Hey, that's what marks a, a genius is. All right. <laughs> All right, Johnny. What do we have for our winner this week? <laughs> we, have, we have, what else could we have? This is McCulloch. For you, Shri, we have a basketball in the, in the <laughs> it's a round basketball I in our so. iBug colors. <laughs> and then, and then this is a special item that we uh, are going to throw in. It is a worm, a, a real worm in the iBug colors. If you don't know why there is a worm, you um, have to watch, watch, watch the, movie. the movie. All right. Thank you, Mr. McCulloch. Mm -hmm. I thought oh, you were going to put a buzzer. Oh, yeah. This is Herbie. For the basketball mm -hmm. game. All right. Nah. OK, we're muting so, everybody. OK, so, yes, Herbie, go. So real quick question for you, Sonia. So you mentioned that he's getting around basketball. What other shapes of basketballs have you encountered? Ah, uh, you know, flat. A flat one. I got it was late. All right. OK, thank you, Mr. McCullough. Time for you to say goodnight. 
Good night. Oh, good. Okay. All right. Now. Okay. So now that concludes the iBug Night at the Virtual Movies, Miracles Movie Minutia. And now we're going to resume with our program and we are going to have a quick iBug Bite segment with our very own Steven. Steven, you have been busy today. Yeah. I, and I'm supposed to follow this? <laughs> I, I I don't know. So we we need to renegotiate this buy bug bites after the movie thing. I mean, this is like you know real theater, and here I come with a a bite of something. Oh well, you're gonna <laughs> wa- dazzle them with your skills. yeah. No okay. pressure. No pressure. No pressure. All, All right. right. Well, here is our eye bug bite for tonight, and uh, we were talking a little bit about voicemail a little while ago. Kind of ironic because tonight's eye bug bite is about recording a greeting in your voicemail. Yes, that's how we're going to do that. Now, there are numerous ways you can do this, and I'll demonstrate uh, them here. I'm going to, first of all, let's go to my phone app. Phone. Phone. Groups. Button. Is that loud enough, Sandia? Perfect. Is she saying pudding? Pudding? <laughs> I hope I, I mean, that would be good. I think um, button. button, that's probably. So I'm in my phone app. I'm going to go to the voicemail tab here on the bottom. Tab bar, voicemail, tab five of five. I'm going to double Selected. tap on that. Voicemail, tab five of five. All right, so I'm in my voicemail tab. I'm going to go up here to the top. Greeting button. And I'm right there where it's greeting. It's, it's like up in the upper left-hand corner. So if I double tap, on greeting, this is one of the ways that we're going to be able to record a greeting for our voicemail. So here we go. I'm going to double tap on greeting right now. Greeting. Retrieving greeting. <clears throat> Set your outgoing message. Okay. So it's retrieving a greeting, which means I've obviously recorded one. So I'm going Set to your outgoing message. Uh, swipe right and let's see what we've got here. Cancel button. Okay. And cancel if you want to get out of that. Greeting. Heading. The heading. Save. Dimmed button. The save button, which we haven't done yet. Default. All right. First, it says default, which is actually you would have to call your phone or call your voicemail to do that. And that's setting up, like, let's say you want to rather, rather not record a message, you want to put your phone number or just your name, record your name as the default message. It will allow you to do that. I'll demonstrate that in a minute. I'm going to swipe to the right one more time, though. Selected. Custom. All right. This is custom. This is where you actually record your message. And I'm going to swipe right again here. Play button. All right. I can play what's already recorded. Record button. Record. Uh, record. <laughs> I'm going to, I can record a new message. All right. I'm going to, I'm going to play. Let's see if I've got one here. I'm going to swipe to the left one and go to the play part. Play button. All right. Let's see what we've got. Stop. Okay, it's supposed to be already be on speaker. For some reason, it is not. But it is recording my message. Or it's not recording. It's playing the message that I had here. Um, And I had it set to speaker, so I'm not sure why it didn't do that. All right, well, let's say I want to change that. I want to change the message that I just did. So I'm going to swipe right. Record button. And I'm going to do a record real quick here. Stop. Hi, you've reached Stephen. I'm sorry that I cannot take your call right now. Please leave a message. And I will get back to you just as soon as I can. Thanks so much for calling and have yourself a great day. Record. All right. So I pushed stop and it's going to, let's see if we will play. Button. Let's see if this thing will play in speaker like I want it to. Stop. And it's not. <laughs> and it was working just fine earlier, wouldn't you know? But it is playing my message that I just did. Um, so if I want to save this message, I'm going to swipe left here. Record, but deep save button. And hit the save button. Alert. The operation couldn't be completed. Come. Apple. Mobile phone error 1000. All right, it's done this to me before. Sometimes what you have to do is kind of back out of the app and try again. So I'm going to, I'm going to. Okay. Button. Click OK and let's back out Doc, here and try phone. it again. Phone, greeting, button, voicemail, heading, greeting, button, cancel, but greet in progress, default, 
selected. Custom. Save. Dimmed. Button. Deep selected. All right, apparently Custom. it didn't save the message, but that's that's what you can do, though, when it's working properly. You record your message. Now, there is one other thing we can do here. I It, it says stop. Whenever you uh, hear your message, you can hear voiceover say stop. There are a couple of different ways you can get around that. You can turn voiceover off, or you can do a two-finger double tap, and it will start recording, but of course, it's not going to tell you that, so you have to kind of guess that it's doing that, and then you do a, a two-finger double tap to stop it, and it will stop, but that way, you know, because I don't like to hear stop or record or what anything voiceover says in my message, so let's see uh, real quickly here. I'm going to cancel out of this. Screen can set your cancel button. Greeting button. All right, now I'm going to go to my contact. Tap I'm going bar. To Contacts. Call myself here. Search. Search. Dictate button. Section index. Stephen Kerr. Mike. Stephen Kerr. Stephen Kerr. Home. iPhone. Hey, all. Face to iPhone. Message. iPhone. Call. Button. All right, I'm going to call myself here. You have no messages. Send. Press two. Check receipt. Press three, personal options. Press four, disconnect. Press star. All right, I'm going to press three. Six, three. Which is personal three. options. Enter recipient's mailbox number. To cancel checking for receipt, press star. Okay, that's not what I wanted to do here. Two. Blue sky. Are you still there? there? You have asked. Sorry about this, guys. I did this this afternoon, so let's try this again here. Edit button. Contacts. Stephen Kerr iPhone, say iPhone, call button. You have no messages. Send. Press two. Check receipt. Press three. Personal options. Press four. Disconnect. Press star. Four. Four. That's what I need to do. Four. Is hit four. Personal okay. options. Administrative options. Press two. Greetings. Press three. Press three. All right. I'm going to press three for greetings here. Three. Personal greetings. One, extended absence greeting, press two, recorded name, press three. All right, so I want to just record my name here. Three. So I'm going to hit three. Three, at the tone. Please say only your first and last name, then press pound. Stephen Kerr. Pound, pound. Your name has been recorded as Stephen Kerr. If you would like to re-record your name, press star. If you like it the way it is, press pound. All right, I'm going to press pound. Pound. Personal options. Administrative options. Press two. Greetings. Press three. All right, so it did save my name. So if you call me and you get my voicemail, it's just going to have me uh, say my name. I could also have done that with just using my number. If I just want to use my number, I could have chosen that option as well. So that is a brief demo as far as recording a voicemail. You can do it in a number of different ways. You can actually go to the phone app and uh, go to voicemail and then hit greeting and then use the uh, custom message to actually record a message uh, sometimes it does have a little trouble saving it as you saw it would not save it uh, usually if you just go out and close out the app and try again it will work but uh, it didn't it didn't save it but you can do it that way or you can call yourself you can call your voicemail and you can actually record i could have actually recorded a message there it gave you the option, um, or you can just use your name or phone number. So that is how you do a greeting on your voicemail. Very nice. Thank you, Stephen. Yeah, I never tried the, the way where you call in and do that. that that's really cool. So thank you. And uh, does anybody have any other questions for Stephen? This is Shree. Go ahead. Hi, Shree. So Stephen, when you did a two finger double tap, does it record the ding or it doesn't do it for voicemail? No, you don't hear, um, you just, when you do the two finger double tap, yeah, it just records it. I don't think it, um, when it plays back, it doesn't have a ding or anything. It just has your message. Okay. And uh, what do you charge for doing personal greeting for the people? <laughs> hey. Yeah, we, we can negotiate that, Shree. Okay, that was we good, thank you. That. <laughs> yeah, you bet, thanks, appreciate this that. This is Ibrahim. Go ahead, Go ahead. Ibrahim. Um, this is Alter Igwe to voicemail. Um, 
if you have voicemail in a separate like third party app, um, is there a way to like transfer to a carrier app that you know? No, oh, that's a good question. I have I, I don't use a third party app. So does anybody um I know one person who uses a third party app on this call. This but Herbie. Yep, that's who I was thinking, Herbie. So what what was your question? <clears throat> There, Ibrahim, I didn't quite. I, I have uh, two apps for voicemail, and one is a third party app I started using a long time ago. And now I want to see if there's a way to transfer them to my carrier's, um, you may, uh, carrier's voicemail app called T Mobile Scan Shield, I think. I don't think Scan Shield is a voicemail app, but I could be wrong. I think that was supposed to be just a call blocker. Um, it does say voicemail that I did check. Okay. Well, then you would be able to disable Umail, and you can do that by going into phone under settings, and I forget the exact place, but it'll be obvious, um, and it's towards the bottom, but you can disable Umail from there. Okay. Cool. All right. Thank you. <clears throat> Any other questions about voicemail greeting? Dana. Mary? Uh, Dana and then Mary. Dana, go ahead. Yeah, it's, it's more of a statement, um, but um, probably to get rid of the um, where uh, Siri says record and stop, you could probably use headphones and record. Yeah, you, you know? can do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. You, you can also, that, that's a good point. Uh, so there's, there are numerous ways to stop that, and that's one of them. Uh, go ahead, Mary. All I wanted to, to say is I don't know if there's people who are new to the iPhone on this call. I remember when I got my first one, I'm not like Steve, you know, used to being on the air, so I was really nervous. <laughs> and so I would suggest that you'd like, you can do like a trial run, you know, once with that, without it recording and see how long it takes you and then do a recording and listen to it and you can do it as many times as you want to until you like it but using that two finger double tap to start and stop it is the best thing because then people won't hear the voiceover right yeah but, that's a good point but Mary. practice if you're new mm -hmm. just practice yeah and and believe it or not i even stumble on it and have to redo it so don't, don't feel bad it's yeah, and the, and the thing is, you can re-record it. Like, if you record it, as long as you don't save it, and even if you do, you, you can still go back and redo it. So it's one of those things that even if you record it, if you don't like it, you can always go back and do it again until you get it right. So that's a good point, Mary. Uh, we can take one more question, and then I'll turn it back over to Sandhya. Is there any more questions about voicemail greeting? If not, Sandhya, I think that takes care of it. All right, thank you. That is so helpful. Yes, and I know sometimes you call people and you just hear their number and you know no identification. No, don't nothing. even know if you're calling the right person. Right, exactly. <laughs> yeah. I think so. it would be really helpful, even if you don't want to record a voicemail, a message, a greeting. You could just say your name. That would be helpful. Mm, this right. is Shri. Yes, sir. Yeah, you know what else is worse is when someone sets a voicemail and it's always full. Yeah, I yeah, know people that. like that. There's a reason for that. <laughs> yeah, hate, there is. I hate voicemail. Okay, <laughs> that's another topic. Okay, we are going to move on. Anybody that didn't get a chance to ask a question, this is your turn. We'd love for everybody to participate. So do you have a question that you would like to ask? Somebody that hasn't had a turn. And we don't use the hand raise feature, so just say your name you'd like to speak. Um, <clears throat> Nikki has a, has a comment. Okay, go ahead. Um, when, when I came in earlier, I, I thought I was hitting the got it button, but I didn't. And it took me to a screen where I was totally by myself. I could only see the speaker and I couldn't do anything. And so I went out, I came back in, same thing. So that's just, that's how they stop you from, from talking. I just thought people might be interested. So what I did was I went to a different Zoom site that I knew was always open and I was able to get in there. And then I came back and then I got the got it sign again. But once you come in, if you mess up and you keep coming in, 
it's still going to put you back in that spot. So you have to go to something else and then come back. And then it looks at you as a new person. I found that fascinating. I thought maybe people would be interested in knowing about that. Thank you very much. I'm done. All right. Yeah. And so Nikki doesn't use voiceover, but you do, whenever there's a call already being recorded, she's referring to the got it button. So you do have to click that to get in. All right. Thank you, Nikki, for that tip. Okay. Who's next? New question, comment? Ibrahim. Okay. Hang on, Ibrahim. We're going to, yeah. you've had a couple of questions. Let's get what other people ask the question and then we'll come back. Okay. All right. So anybody else want to ask a question? Dana. Go ahead, Dana. Uh, yeah. Um, it, uh, my question is, uh, is there a way to delete apps from your app library? I'm having problems with an app and I'd like to delete it completely and reinstall it and see if it helps. All right. Who knows how to help Dana delete an app from his app library? What? Anybody? Any thoughts? This is Deb. Deb, go ahead. Um, I think you can still tap on that app and hold down on it just like you have before and then swipe up or down to delete and it'll ask you, you know, to confirm it, but it, it, you can delete it completely from that app library that way, I think. All right. Thank you, Deb. Anybody else? Is it Ibrahim? Okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, these days when you double tap on and hold it, it could be two options. Uh, the first one, it says you move and add the app library, but if you keep going on the edge, it will say delete app as well. Okay. Thank you, Ibrahim. All right, Dana. This is Ned. Ned, go ahead, sir. I sometimes I have found my apps in the phone storage, in the iPhone storage, and I can delete them there. Hmm. So okay. I discovered that a couple of weeks ago. All right. Thanks, Ned. Hmm. Okay, Dana. I hope that helps you. All right. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks for the question. All right, who's next? Somebody new that hasn't had a turn. Who's next? Like to give everybody a chance. Anybody new? Okay, go ahead, Ibrahim. Uh, I didn't say anything. I thought you yeah. wanted to ask a question earlier. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. Um, I'm using Microsoft Edge on the iPad, and I click a link in an email to open it in the browser. And for some reason, I've noticed for the last couple of times I tried this, it doesn't open, like, the whole link. It opens into this slider, um, like, pop-up window where it says, uh, uh, the, it says, um, would you like to open this link in Microsoft Edge? And I click on that. But when I open it, it just opens a black window. It doesn't let me read the article I've opened. All right. Anybody have any help for Ibrahim? Using Microsoft Edge with your iPad. <clears throat> All right. I don't hear anything. Ibrahim might have to put that one on hold or do some more research on that one. Okay. We might have to get back to you on that one. Great question. Okay. All right. Who's next? Anybody new? Marvin from Chicago. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Okay. I, okay. I want to know if there are to delete multiple contacts with the same. Okay. In my contact, Liz, I have the same contact like 40 times. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so really I'm important. trying to delete them. <laughs> Is it a way for me to delete them or do I have to sit and go through each one and delete them one by one by one? First of all, how did they get Thank there? You. How did they get there? I have there? no idea. <laughs> I was looking through it and it's the only one that has uh, like 
30, 40 contacts wow. of the same thing. Okay, let's see. Let's see. I have <laughs> more and it drives me crazy, but okay, that's good. That's a new one. Okay, anybody have any help for Marvin to get rid of his 40 contacts of the same person? This is Herbie. Go ahead, Herbie. On the phone, I don't think you can, but if on the Mac, you actually could by select, well, you can't do a select all, but you could like, yeah, eh, there's not, ways to gonna talk about the Mac here. So I ahead. know, but I'm just saying, I don't think it's possible on the phone. That's why okay. I had to offer yeah, an alternative. What I think, don't think you can do it on your phone because usually you would go to an open but, a contact and then delete at the very bottom. So but right, my anyway. one thought is, does anybody know if if contacts on the iPad works is the same way on the Mac, then I could give the, if you have a Bluetooth keyboard, I could give the same key commands. But if it doesn't, then, um, yeah, even then, though, you still can't do a select all either way. You still have to do okay, some more. It's hard to hear so. when you're talking quietly. Okay, okay, go ahead. Okay, this so let's Shree. see. Any, uh, Shree, go ahead. Yeah, I don't think you can. Yeah. Sorry, Marvin. This is Chanel. Oh, Chanel. She's going to yeah, say. Well, I was going to, so I'm wondering if, if you're, I don't, okay, iCloud, if you're able to get onto iCloud.com and Safari, um, I, I at least know, like on the Mac and iCloud, you can go to remove duplicates in the contacts app. So if you're able to bring up your, yeah, actually, <laughs> it, it might be a little bit more complicated. So you might be able to get like a third party app. Um, Raul a couple years ago did a cafe where yes. he talked about some apps and I even tried using them for a while that helps you manage your contacts and that app could delete them, but I'd have to figure out what that app was because I don't uh, use it anymore. Yeah, so. this is something I think, well, the apps that I remember, does this sound right to Chanel? Uh, simpler yes yes that's perfect yes simpler, and then there was some i just had it and now i lost it but it was in my no head. that was yeah that was one of them so yeah that might be the way to go marvin so great question okay marvin good luck okay karen i have a question karen go ahead speaking of contacts i blocked somebody one time and mm -hmm. Now I want to, and I removed their contact. First I blocked the number, then I deleted the contact. But I want to, you know, add their number again. How do I do that? And it's blocked. Okay, so they are blocked. So the question is, how do you unblock somebody? Yeah, and I deleted the contact, so I can't like swipe down to unblock this contact because I deleted it. Oh, well then. <laughs> It made me mad. Yeah, that, I guess so. <laughs> okay. Uh, anybody have any help for Karen? Short of calling the person up and saying, can I have your contact number again? Who? I mean, anymore? if I put the number in again, won't it still be blocked if I just... Uh, anybody have want to help Karen out with blocking and unblocking? Oh, this is Shree. Shree. I'm just kind of thinking about this. What ha Have you tried to enter the number back in and see if it says blocked or if you could just unblock it? No, I didn't try. I was just sitting here wondering, would it work? I've never blocked anyone, so I, I can't tell you after you delete it. I would just try it. Terry okay. is here with our... <laughs> Who have you blocked, Terry? Ann? Probably me. <laughs> I have blocked numbers <laughs> okay and so what can you do to unblock them or can so you help karen if, yeah if you've blocked a number you can uh it then becomes just like mute and unmute it, it you then see an unblock option i deleted the, the number contact. that um, this is herbie it's Roy. Hang on, hang on. Let Terry unfinish and then Terry and then Kirby. Go ahead. Go ahead, Terry. Yeah. So if you deleted the contact, can you, um, if it's in your, your calls uh, that you've made, is it possible to 
um, find that number and then add it back in and then see if it's going to be blocked or unblocked. In other words, oh, if no. like you, could you go to recent calls or. Oh, no, we haven't might... talked in a while. No, 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 that recent. Hang on, we were getting some background noise. So, okay. Uh, so Terry Ann, I think to answer your question, she hasn't talked to this person in a long time. Okay, uh, go ahead, Roy, you want to answer the question? You have to unmute. If you are there. All right, Roy, no. Sorry, I'm, I'm bad. Go ahead, go ahead. Uh, uh, somebody may have already covered this. I had to okay. take a call. But if you go to settings to phone at the bottom, you have a list of everybody you blocked. It's a block button. If you go in there and find the number, you can flick up and unblock them. From oh, there. Lord, I was trying not to have to do that. I blocked so many numbers. I blocked, I don't know, probably blocked okay, hundreds of numbers. I had. Sorry. Okay. I thought of that. Yeah, the list is just so long. All right. Okay, Karen. Okay, Herbie, anything else to add? No, mine was the same suggestion as Roy, okay. but um, this yeah. is right. Roy again. Okay, go ahead, Roy. Uh, you know, if you're using a keyboard, you could open up that list and then do a find V O F and type in the number, and I'll bet it would put you right on it. But she doesn't know the number. I think that's the whole problem. Oh, okay. she's deleted the contact. Well, yeah, okay. you'd have to know the number. Yeah, you're going to have to know the number. <laughs> so, Herbie. Okay, Herbie, go on. Let's go. I was going to, I do think, though, that if somebody, if you block somebody, I think they still can get to your voicemail, if I'm not mistaken. So you could always hope that that friend calls you and then you'd be able to get the number from the voicemail. But, um, <laughs> This yeah. is Steven. Okay. Okay, Steven. Yeah, that is true. Uh, what happens is like when you go to your voicemail tab, there is a, it, it'll show, it'll say blocked one call or however many calls are in there. So they can leave you a voicemail. I mean, you just don't know it unless you go look for it. But that's probably, I mean, the only other thing I could think of is be kind of a risk, but again, you don't know the number, so you can't, is you, you call the number, let it ring like just briefly and then hang up and then it's in your recents. <laughs> and then you can unblock it from there that but you number. said you don't know the number so that's not going to help either so. actually this is her with one of the suggestions okay if most of the numbers you have blocked are scam numbers then they're probably most likely they actually no longer exist so one option is unblock everybody and then start anew with you know who you block but if you block to a lot of people for personal reasons that's not going to work not going to work so. okay so we're going to move on okay karen uh you probably are just going to have to call this person and get their contact info that's not a good result but i can't call them if i don't remember the number that's okay i'll work it out oh, you'll figure it out okay <laughs> all right great question okay next <laughs> who's next somebody new the new question Somebody that hasn't had a turn, please. Anybody? Anybody? This is Jody. Jody, go ahead. Yeah, I have an old SE of the original, and the battery is, I think the battery's dead on it. But even when I plug it in, it still doesn't work. Should it be working, even though the, you know, just using the power? All right. Can Jody use her old SE purely on AC power? Yeah, it's, it's, it won't do it, but I don't understand why. Okay. Well, obviously, it doesn't work. It's, it's <laughs> just a paperweight now. Yeah. This is Shree. Shree? This is Terry. Okay, go ahead, Shree, and then Terry. Uh, I was going to say, um, you, your battery still needs to generate a little bit of power to maintain the charge coming in from your... Um, uh, from your AC. So is the battery dead, dead? Yeah. And it, but even when it's plugged in, I would, I would assume that it's, it's plugged in, that it would uh, use the, the power from the plug to, to run the phone. But it still but it needs, won't even do that. It still needs a little bit of charge on the battery. I, I think the battery still has okay. to be. All right. Terry, had anything to add to that? I think that um, when you plug the phone in, um, it's actually charging the battery. It's not running the phone on AC power. Okay. 
Okay. All right. Makes Good sense. luck, Jody. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. That makes sense. All right. Next. Who's next? Who's next? Somebody new with a question. This is your turn to ask a question. This is free. Okay. Go ahead. Um, I made a comment about I was helping a friend of mine whose Siri would go down to a low volume after the second question asked. Right. Um, so I figured it out if you turn off auto ducking, that fixed the problem. Oh, yeah. Auto ducking. Audio ducking. Audio, Audio ducking. ducking. Sorry. That's right. Oh, yeah. That's a, that's a painful one. Okay. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Shri, for the follow up there. Okay, well, I have a quick question then. If anybody else have a question? Okay, I'm gonna ask my question. I have an Apple Watch and I don't remember what it is. You know, it's a recent, like probably about a year old. Anyway, so I put it on the little pedestal stand and it's charging and then I'm ready to go somewhere and then it's not charged. So it's, uh, you know, I know that like it gets warm and then it gets to, you know, fully charged. But then when I leave it on the stand, it stops charging. And then it, you know, when I'm ready to go out the next time, it's not charged. Is there some reason, something defective about the charging or is it something wrong with my watch? Me. Is that free? Or Herbie. everybody? Harvey, go ahead. Um, so you say you leave it like, so do you leave it on the charger for an extended amount of time? All the then? time. Or... It just so I it. have, it's funny because I was reading something today that if you leave a smartphone, and I would assume this applies to watch, plugged in all the time, that's going to ruin the battery life. I used so to do it. it I've done it with all of my watches all this time. So I don't know. I'd... This is Shree. Shree? Are you, did you update your watch to the latest, uh, watch os yeah i think so yeah because there is a known issue where the watches are not charging on third-party chargers mm. and they fixed it with the latest os uh, okay. watch os okay i'll have to check that out I, I thought i updated it fairly recently but this has been going on for i mean before i used to go physically into work and i would use it all day but now that it's kind of working from home and it sits it sits on its i don't wear my watch in the house so all right okay well thank you for that i'll check that out thank you yeah, this is tree Good morning, yep. jody. okay hang on jody go ahead tree uh, did you did you set up your watch to do battery optimized charge on it i don't remember if i did that I you might want to make sure you do that too okay this, this is marty okay marty is this on the watch um yeah, I, okay. I'm wondering if, how long have you had the watch? If you, did you check your maximum battery capacity? Uh, no, I haven't checked and I just, I've lost track. It's about probably a year or two old, so. Oh, okay, that, that shouldn't be, a, that wouldn't be a problem then. Okay, thank you, Marty. Okay, go ahead, Jody. Yeah, I just want to thank Herbie. That's probably why my SE died because, you know, getting the new SE, I kept the old SE on the charger and that's probably what killed the battery. So thank you for that. All right. Thanks, Herbie, for killing Jody's battery. Okay, next. Well, I just okay. explained how it got killed. That's all. Okay, who's next? New question? Comment? Stephanie, I'd love to hear from somebody who hasn't had a turn. or if you This even... is Terry. Go ahead, Terry. Hi. I haven't had a turn with a question, I don't think, but go ahead, go ahead. Um, mm -hmm. okay. Um, I, since we now know that um, in um, horizontal, when the phone, when the larger phones are in landscape, uh, mode. landscape mode, that the layout, you have the two screens. I'm wondering if somebody can who might have one of those larger phones can sort of describe what's on the left side of the screen versus what's on the right side of the screen so I can better help my, um, my mentee All because right. I've Shree. got an SE and so I can't do All that. Right. Go ahead, Shri. So Terry, and so it's basically like if you have your iPad, you know, if you go to settings on your iPad, 
and you double tap on settings, all the information is on the right side, but on the left side, it still has, uh, you know, it'll have all of the, the normal settings. Like for example, if you go to settings and you go to accessibility, all your options on your accessibility is on your left side, but all your different options within setting is still on your left-hand side. That's how it kind of looks like when you move it to landscape. So for example, like I said, with settings, if you uh, move the phone to landscape and you double tap on settings ex uh, accessibility, your options for accessibility would be on the right-hand side and on your left-hand side would be you know, all your different settings. This is Terry. So when you want to swipe to find the things that are on the left side of your phone, if you're going to swipe, let's say, left to right or right to left, you, am I correct that you basically have to swipe from the, well, if the, the bottom of the phone is on your left side, let's say you, you can only swipe from the bottom to the middle of the phone to swipe right. And if you're gonna swipe using, if you're gonna try and find the items that are on the right side of the screen, you would swipe from the top of the phone to just the middle left of the phone. Is that? Mary? This is Shri. Oh. Okay, go ahead, Shri and then Mary. So for example, let's go back to the accessibility that I was describing. So if you're on the, if you touch on the right side, you're going to have all your settings within accessibility. Now, if you swipe left, you're still going to be in the accessibility settings. So what you have to do is you have to do a long swipe from right to left. That'll take the focus from accessibility back into settings. It's not up or down, it's from left to right. I'm sorry, from right to left, it'll take you back to settings. All right, go ahead, Mary. Oh, I didn't know about doing a, a long swipe, swipe like that, but what I did know, if at least if it's anything like the iPad at all, um, the, um, I feel like with the iPad, I'm better off if I actually pick up my finger and don't try to swipe over there. Like the on the iPad, the left side of the screen is about the first third of it and the right side is the bigger half, so it's like more like two thirds. I don't know if the phone is like that, but I would suspect it is. Um, you know, so you have the more general stuff on the left side. But like say if, you, if it was your mail, um, another example is, is you'd see the messages or you might, you know, if, if where you are is where the messages are, you'd see the messages on the left side and then the, the content of whatever message happens to be open would be that right side. And if you want to get back to where the messages are, to me, it seems like the easiest way to get over there is to just pick your finger up and put it back over on that left side instead of like swipe, 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 swipe forever and ever. Okay. Even though that long one might do it too. Well, that'll do it too. This is Chris. Chris. Terry, I think. Um, I don't have a, a plus size phone, but I think the containers option and the rotor, I think that will switch you from the left side to the right side. If you rotate to containers and flick up or down. And what Mary was saying, she's right. If you just kind of touch to the top left or touch to the top right, that will put you either on the left-hand side of the screen or the right-hand half of that screen. And if you're on the left-hand side and you keep flicking to the right, it'll keep going down the, the, the left-hand side of that screen. And once again, to the last item on that left-hand side of the screen, if you flick to the right, it'll jump you up to the first item on the right-hand side of the screen. All right. And this is a follow-up to our discussion we had last week. So thank you very much, everybody. Hope that helps you tarry in. Okay. Who's next? New question, new comment? Anybody that didn't have a turn? Or if you had a turn, it's fine. Who would like to ask a question? Jody with another question. Okay, go ahead. I have a friend that has an AT&T email account and she uses the mail app on her phone and her account is full. Is there a way to delete all, you know, to clear out all of the emails in an account on the phone or would that be something you have to do through AT&T? Okay, anybody clearing out your 
AT&T account. This is Shree. Go ahead. So is she want to delete everything that's in the inbox of her mail app? Yes. So you can go to the mail app and go click on edit on the top right, which is going to be yeah. here in the edit mode. And there's a select all and it'll checkbox everything. And then you can just hit the delete button. Oh, okay. Thank you. I, I knew there was an edit, but I didn't know you could, you could do that. Thank you. It, Thank you very much. This is straight. Yes. So you can this select individually in there. Like if you want to select the first, the third, the fifth and so on, or you can just do select all. all okay. Right. Thank you. Go ahead, Greg. Yeah, I, um, you can clear out your your um, any of your mailboxes on your phone. But interestingly enough, like with our uh, cable email, uh, the email we have through our cable company, you have to go on their website and and clear out your mail on on the website. Uh, we had we had thousands and thousands of emails that were still showing up in the 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 internet, the cable uh, mail carrier. Um, this is her the, everything was showing up deleted on the phone, but it was still in the in the uh, sudden link, the cable company email folder, which and we were getting messages that our that the mailbox was full. Wow. OK, That's thank you. Very interesting. <clears throat> okay. This is Herbie. Yes, quickly go ahead, Harvey. So, whether you're suddenly keep, so on your phone though, are you using it with IMAP or as POP3? Question is for you, Greg. Uh, I guess, uh, uh, this, sorry, this I think it, I uh, I the cable carrier is just uh, uh, POP, it's not IMAP. Oh, that's okay. So, that's the difference. Um, I don't know what AT&T uses, but if it uses IMAP, which I'm pretty sure it does, then it's going to follow the server. But POP3 is a totally different type of configuration altogether. And so, but if it's using IMAP, then the select all method is going to work and delete because the IMAP is a direct link to the server. So. Um, this is Shree. Uh, Shree. Yeah, one of the things I would suggest, and this is not, you know, if you already have it, but if you plan to set up a mail account, I would suggest you go through one of the mail, the big main, the big mail providers instead of your carrier uh, provider, because you're going to have these kind of restrictions, um, as well as getting spams and other things where these mail companies, that's what they do. That's their specialty instead of um, relying on these um, ISP people to give you mail service. ISP, Internet Service Provider. Okay, thank you very much for that question. All right, anybody else a quick question before we end for the evening? Anybody else a quick question? Who would like to ask the last question? Come on. Um, this is Sri. Go ahead. Has anyone in the group update to 15.4, and if so, what's their experience been so far? All right. When did that come out? Today? This, this morning. Day? This morning. Okay. Well, anybody? This is Herbie. Go ahead. Um, so I've updated to iOS.4, and um, I haven't noticed any difference. Um, I think Chanel had some interesting experiences with the trying the uh, um, face ID with the mask, but I don't know if she's able to unmute or not and talk about that, but- um, This is Chanel, if there's time. Go ahead, quick, not. go ahead. Okay, yeah, I'm not able to get the face new face ID thing to work because I suspect it's, I cannot actually control my eye movements and look directly at my phone. Um, so I only got it to recognize once or to unlock once out of several times when I had my mask on. So I will opt for the Apple Watch method that I've been using. Um, but you don't need to have a mask on when you set it up. But just for me, it doesn't work very well recognizing or unlocking once the mask is on. So I'm done. Thank you, Chanel. Okay, Bill. 
Very good. So this brings us to the end of our call today. Thank you so much, Stephen, for helping me to facilitate. You're welcome. Oh, wow. And so just a real quick recap of our busy week. Like I said, tomorrow is Mac Buzz on Clubhouse 5 to 6. Then Wednesday, Android Insight from 7 to 8.30 on Zoom. Thursday, Trekkie Talk from 8 to 9.30. Episodes nine, 8 and 9 of Next Generation Season 4. Then Friday, I bet not at the virtual movies. We're going to be watching Coach Carter, an inspirational movie. Just getting ready for March Madness, right? Uh, then off this weekend, definitely try to go back and review the iBug Cafe if you didn't get to uh, listen to it in person. And uh, we thank everybody for all the great questions tonight. And uh, thanks for the Apple review, Herbie and Stephen. And we will be back next week and have a great night. Thank you very much. And oh, please remember our fundraiser. Check out all the information about the $500 gift card to the Apple Store or a $10 donation or six tickets for $50. All right, with that, we will say good night. Good night.